American economy primarily, which is in real trouble right now. And it's not something we can fix with a cleverly crafted bailout, as we've done before. The problem here isn't that a few reckless quants on Wall Street did crazy things with credit default swaps. The problem feels deeper than that. It feels systemic. And you see it in what you buy. Everything, the prices of everything, are shooting beyond reach for a lot of people in the United States. That would include energy, food, durable goods, housing, education, credit. All of it is a lot more expensive than it was just recently. Why? Why has median rent in Manhattan jumped by 25% in a single year? Why has your grocery bill gone up by hundreds of dollars a month? Why can't you afford to fill your car anymore? Those are fair questions. It's not like we've run out of the commodities we need. The United States has a lot of them. It's a continental country. It stretches from the Atlantic to the Pacific. So we've got plenty of room for housing. We've got more than enough oil and gas within our own borders to be completely energy independent with some left over. We've got more fertile farmland than any country on the planet. Food should be cheap. So the problem is definitely not our resources. Our resources in the United States are abundant. The problem is our leaders. The things you need are too expensive to buy because politicians created inflation. And they did it for a simple reason. They'd racked up so much debt buying votes and enriching themselves and their families that they had no choice but to weaken the U.S. dollar in order to make the payments on the loans they took out. It's that simple. And then once inflation arrived, ideologues in the Biden administration immediately understood how it could be used. So since you can no longer afford to drive your car, you will have no choice but to accept their green energy scams. And that means their donors who run those scams will get richer and they will get control over the U.S. economy. So everyone wins except you. It's perfect. None of it happened by accident. This is a manufactured disaster. Now, in a normal country, few leaders would dare to pull off something this brazen and destructive. They'd be afraid to. They'd be flirting with revolution. It'd be too risky. And the people who run our country are fully aware of the risks, and they're very worried about it. If you're wondering why they're hyperventilating about January 6th, that's why. They seem afraid because they are afraid. To them, a crowd of angry people at the Capitol looks a lot like a foretaste of things to come. That's exactly why they're so desperate to take your guns away. It's why they're screaming at you about trans rights and systemic racism and the all-encompassing evil of the president of faraway Russia, huh? Why are they talking about them? these things? It seems confusing at first. What does any of that have to do with our actual problems here and improving your life? Well, none of it has anything to do with improving your life, and that's the point. They're hoping that if they keep screaming at you, you'll be too bewildered and too off-balance to notice what is happening to the country around you, much less able to fight back against it. And just to make sure you're too bewildered to act as they scream, they shift the blame from themselves to you. So they're now pronouncing you guilty for the crimes that they committed. You've watched this happen with the economy. First, they told you that inflation wasn't real. You're imagining that, but you weren't. So then they explain that actually inflation is happening, but it's a good thing because you deserve it. You deserve to pay more for the things you buy. Why? Because your expectations were way too high. You pampered first world Karen. You expected to eat meat for dinner and take an annual vacation on commercial airliners that departed on time. What were you thinking? You expected to fill your tank or buy a sheet of plywood for less than 75 bucks. Huh? Talk about out of whack. You expected to be able to send your children to the public schools you pay for with the expectation they might learn something. You thought you could load your car in the Safeway parking lot with groceries you could afford without being shot to death by armed robbers. You imagined you could live in a country that resembled the place you grew up in, where people spoke English and didn't throw trash out the window or smoke fentanyl on the sidewalk. But it turns out, Mr. and Mrs. America, you expected too much, and that's your fault. In Nigeria, all of this is normal. So stop whining and eat your bugs.